I hope you're all having a good time. I'm going to be talking to you today about the most efficient route to fat loss. And I had some trouble trying to condense this down into an hour presentation because, as you probably are all more than aware, it's a very kind of complicated, complicated thing. Um, but we're going to go over it and hopefully give you some kind of priorities to take away and know how to attack it. So if you have a question during, then more, I'm more than happy for you to ask if it relates to the slide as long as you can hopefully see it. Um, we're going to have a 15, Q &A, 15 minute Q&A at the end and then if anyone doesn't want to ask, during that time you want to come to me one on one, I'm more than happy for you to come on. So who am I? I thought it would be good to introduce kind of where I've come from, what I've done, because how can you relate to someone who isn't a human as well? So I've tried very hard to get into good shape and I've struggled being underweight or what I was not happy with my body weight and I was very strict with the way I ate. I would take Tupperware to friends' houses and make sure I was getting in my chicken and broccoli and brown rice, eating all the right things I thought. And then I was overweight at one point when I thought I could gain all the muscle in the world and just shovel in all the food and I just, it was all the right food, I wasn't eating anything crazy <coughs> bad, almost wish I was because at least then it would be kind of get some enjoyment out of it. But. I was pretty unhappy in both photos and both scenarios. And who am I now? So right now, I am an online personal trainer. I've done one-on-one -on -one in personal coaching as well, but now I'm mainly online. I'm a powerlifter and bodybuilder. Um, I got pretty lean when I did bodybuilding, so I managed to lose quite a lot of fat for myself. I came down from 190 pounds to um, 160 pounds, so and that was over the course of about a year, just under a year. Um, and I've worked with and got results with over 250 people. So when you work on the internet, the great thing is you can work with a lot of people. And I've had the great opportunity to help a lot of people lose fat, men, women, um, and also help women lift heavy weights. It's head of one of my clients there. So we want the most efficient route to fat loss, don't we? We don't want anything kind of wishy-washy. We want the most efficient part. So obviously it's like something, because that's going to get you from really fat to super skinny. But I thought, apart from being funny, it was important to show this because people really struggle with losing fat, and actually struggle not to put it all on. And it's very hard, and so hard, that people have to go to extreme lengths to get it off. Which, if there's a way to do it without doing this, I want you to have that, and I'm very passionate about people not getting into situations where they have to spend ludic ludicrous amounts of money to do something that, in my view, isn't very helpful or kind of natural. So we want to avoid situations like life assumption. So, why are you here? You want to lose fat efficiently. And it's confusing because there's so many different ways to do it. There's bad diets, there's gimmicks, there's, there's something new every single year, all the time, that's being blasted towards you. You've probably seen this advert, five foods never to eat. It never gives you the answer, and there's probably foods on there that you do eat, and they're absolutely fine. So, why do they exist? They exist because we demand them. They wouldn't exist if we didn't want the kind of quick fix, the easy solution. Everyone wants the most efficient way. And the most efficient way doesn't mean it's easy. This just means there is a route for it. So if we didn't demand it, then we'd supply it. But everyone does want that kind of quick fix, that pill. So how do we solve that problem? Your need to have a basic education in the fundamentals that are going to give you fat loss. If you have that, you can look at diets and you can be like, okay, this diet looks great on paper, but does it really fit with the fundamental basics that I know are going to give you fat loss? Because if it doesn't, then it's probably not going to really work. And then another thing that you should really have is to be a skeptic. Because there's so many different approaches to dieting, and if it sounds too easy, it probably is, because we all know it's not easy to practice. So those two things I will help you with today. So why do diets work? Because we know diets do work, because we've had success with them, and we know things like Atkins, they, they definitely do provide results. We've seen it, we see transformation pictures, all these people see tremendous things. So whether it's low fat, low carb, or they kind of do an intermittent party approach, like the 5-2 diet or something, they all restrict something. And it all comes down to energy in versus energy out. And it is as simple as that. If you provide your body with insufficient calories, it will have to get from somewhere, and hopefully it's going to be body fat stores. <coughs> so 
why don't diets work long term? Because they're unsustainable. So like my diet that I tried to have, I actually lack the understanding of energy balance in the first place. But what if Louise wants to take you out clubbing? <laughs> what do you do? You're going to drink a load of booze. You may even kind of have some cheesy chips afterwards. How does that stick with your diet? It doesn't really work. And just in the same way, even if you want to go to a friend's house and you're on this meal plan and that meal doesn't fit with your meal, what are you going to do? You need a, a way to get around that. Because in this modern day environment, it just becomes very difficult to stick to boring foods. We don't want to do that. We want to have the ability to enjoy our life at the same time. So we don't want it to necessarily be a diet that takes over our lives and kind of become a lifestyle. So the second way they don't work is because they lack education. So that you're on a diet, and many people do these diets, and then you ask them kind of, why is it working? They don't really know why it's working, it just is. And then when they stall out, because you inevitably do stall out on every diet, because the body fights fat loss, we know this, it gets much harder as you get uh, thinner, you kind of lack the education to know what to do when you stall. So I'm going to help you with both these problems today. <laughs> do you want to find a diet that will work for life? You need to have an awareness of why the diet is working for you, and it needs to be flexible so you can fit it with your life. And studies show that having a flexible approach to your nutrition is actually the way to go. They work for the long term. And I've just highlighted kind of the end point of the study here, which suggests that non-flexible diets and strategies are associated with eating disorder symptoms and a higher BMI. Although this is in non-obese women, we can kind of put this towards everyone, I think everyone agrees that when they're on a restrictive diet, it probably, if they stick to it, it kind of becomes a bit of a, a disordered way of eating, we see with like orthorexia coming out and things like that. And I've experienced it personally, it's, it's not a fun way to live. <coughs> or you end up breaking the diet and putting the weight loss back on, which is a horrible thing. So scientific dieting works. Scientific dieting works, but it has many components. When should you eat? How much should you eat? <coughs> what to eat? They're all good questions and ones that could be kind of confusing and difficult to answer. But something we can know is are they all equal in importance? So is it as important to eat three meals a day as it is to get your total calories right at the end of the day? Is it important to have protein first workout or is it more important that you've had the right amount of total protein for the day? So we can set up some priorities. So calories are king. They are the most important thing to get right, and I want you to take that away from today. Macronutrients come in second place, which are protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Alcohol is also a macronutrient, but not so commonly thought, because hopefully you will not kind of be having too much of that. And I'll go over those in further detail. And then finally, meal composition slash what to eat is the final priority. And then Overriding all of that is consistency with it because the best diet is the one you can stick to. Because most diets fail us because we cannot stick to them, they just are not realistic. So, I'm going to give you a realistic diet. So, number one, calories. So, the body cannot produce its own energy, we have to take it in. And so, that energy is transferred from the food to us, and then we either store it or then and then use it on a later date. And if we provide our body with too little energy, then we have to burn our own energy stores. So for fat loss, we need that calorie deficit so we start burning energy from our own energy stores. And hopefully fat, which I'll come on to. So, this bowl of granola has loads of great things in it. It has oats in there, it has dried fruit in there, it has seeds in there, and it's all, it's acting nice and kind and healthy, but it's 1,400 calories. That's a lot of calories. If you have two bowls of that, that's probably more than the majority of this room need to maintain their weight, let alone try and lose weight. And if you have that for breakfast, that's kind of your day blow. So I just thought that was important because a lot of things are healthy, but only in context of those calories, which is our number one priority, which we're going to solve. Second are macronutrients and their role. So hopefully you've seen kind of nutritional information on the back of packets. And there's quite a lot of information on there. Um, but what we now know is that energy, calories, is the thing we should look at most. Second, or in secondary importance, are the protein, fats, and carbohydrates. 
but really it's those calories. So protein has four calories per gram, and that's most important for growth and repair. And I think it's important to have an understanding that each macronutrient has its own particular role, and we don't want to cut any of them out because they're all important for their own given reason. Fats have nine calories per gram, and these have essential fatty acids that we need for, for life, and they provide many essential vitamins, and they also make food taste delicious. Carbs have four calories per gram, and are the body's preferred energy source. And they also have vitamins in, we know fruit is a carbohydrate source, there's lots of vitamins, it has fiber, which is also important for many, many reasons. So they all have their particular roles. So we don't want to get rid of any particular one. So, in your serving size, I'm sure all of you have probably seen that men generally are told 2,500 calories, that's what you need to maintain your weight. Women, 2,000. But there's many different shapes of sizes of everyone. These are Olympic athletes, and even they are all completely different. Different heights, different uh, body mass, different activity levels depending on the sport they perform. So we all need different serving sizes according to our own body. And important towards that is the metabolic period, pyramid, which I've kind of created, in that our total metabolic rate, which is the total number of calories burned in a day, comes down to our basal metabolic rate, which is the number of calories we need to just maintain our body weight at rest. Our NEAT, so non-exercise activity thermogenesis, so that's stuff like I'm walking around here, I'm burning energy, or I'm walking, I walked here, that was again, it's not exercise, but I'm burning energies, energies, energy. And then the thermic effect of activity, so that's like you did the hit class this morning, you burn a load of calories, that also contributes, but less so to the total your BMR and eat. And then finally, the thermic effect of food, which is the energy you use to digest food. So you don't actually get every single calorie that you ingest. But most important is basal metabolic rate. So this is important for females to understand because females in general are always smaller than males. So for men, fat loss does come easier because we can eat more, generally because there are more of us. So your serving size. So I will give you these slides in case this is a bit quick, but there's so many different ways to work out how many calories you need, and there's so many different calculations. They all are very similar in many ways, and actually I've run, I've run them all for myself and different people, and they all come within the same sort of range. But I like to simplify it, and do your body weight times 10 uh, in pounds to get your BMR and that's the number of calories you need without doing anything. And then multiply that by an activity multiplier. So it goes all the way from 1.2 to 1.9. So if you have an active job, you're on your feet all day, maybe you're Louise and a PT, teaching people all day on her feet, and then exercising yourself, you may be well, extremely active, so you need more calories. Whereas someone who is an office worker, sitting on their bum all day, doesn't need much more above just the number they need to maintain their weight from doing nothing because they're doing very little. So I think it's important to find out your serving size because if you compare your diet to Louise's, you do her diet. If you're a sedentary office worker, you're not going to burn, you're not going to lose weight. You may put weight on because Louise can consume so many more calories. <laughs> <laughs> so an example. So in a hundred and found a forty pound woman who goes to the gym three times per week and looks after two young children. So she's quite active, but not massively and fairly small. So 1,400 calories would be kind of a BMR, times that by 1.55, kind of in the middle of the activity factor, and we get to 2,170 calories. That should be roughly her maintenance. These aren't ever going to be exact because they're calculations, and I'll come on to how you get to figuring out exactly what your maintenance is later, but we monitor those. So we need to create that calorie deficit, because now we have her maintenance calories. So, something that is important that I don't think any diets would really, really consider is a sustainable rate of loss. Because if we lose too fast, we could lose lean body mass. And we know muscle is important, not just for kind of looking better, but also keeping ourselves healthier in older age, kind of looking after our joints, and also it's more metabolically active than fat tissue. So we want to look better, we want to burn more calories, we want to keep that muscle mass, so we don't want to lose too fast. And also if you find you lose too fast, you'll probably be more likely to binge and break, because that means you have to restrict heavily and the body will fight you harder and harder. 
So if we do it slower, we can kind of coax the body rather than kind of really, really shock it and it will react, coax it and it will respond the way you want it to. And also metabolic adaption. So this is your, your body fighting you, basically. Um, your metabolic rate will come down, your hunger hormones will come up, and you'll be more likely to break than kind of Even if you don't feel hungry? Sorry, what's that? Sorry? Even if you don't feel hungry? Is that, what's the question specifically? Um, will your metabolism go down mm -hmm. even if you have a full meal a day, proper, very healthy diet, and you're hungry only when you wake up in the morning? Will I, uh, and you're losing faster than 1% of your total body weight. Yeah, exactly. It depends, I'd say it depends how much faster than that. I'd say much faster than that you'll probably, I mean in the first few weeks you may well be fine because you probably know in the first part. You might not realise but in the first few weeks of dieting often means a lot of water weight. So you may find you lose faster than 1% in the first few weeks but much past that I think you probably will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but definitely hunger is a great thing to go by your own hunger signals. Um, if you're not feeling hungry on a diet, that's amazing and you're losing weight. Like, keep I drop with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, generally 3,500 calories are needed to burn one pound of fat. So that's the deficit we kind of want to aim for because for her, she wants to lose between 0.7 to 1.4 pounds per week, rounded to 0.5 to 1.5. So, if we take away 500 calories from her maintenance, that comes to 1,670 calories for her to lose a pound a week. So, if, if, hopefully that's not too confusing. So then finally, food composition slash what to eat. So, as we know, protein, carbs and fat all have their particular roles for our body. And so we don't want to needlessly restrict any. I think we can all admit to it. I know personally when I tried to do a keto diet and I was cutting out all carbs, all I wanted were carbs. That's all I wanted. I didn't want anything else, I couldn't care less, I just wanted carbs. I know when it came to the weekend I struggled massively not to cheat. And then if I did have something that was like a slice of bread, I was like, oh, really craving a slice of bread, with some jam, I'd have the whole kind of loaf and the whole the whole the whole jar of jam was gone. So that completely would ruin my diet and that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid having to kind of, we're on or off the diet, we just kind of want to be on it. So you need to have well-structured meals. So your plate should have some lean protein, some starchy carbs, and some healthy fats. And then you could have this between three to six meals per day, according to your lifestyle. As we know, most important is calories, then macros, then food composition, and then things like timing of all of that dramatically drops in importance when it comes down to your lifestyle. So I think an important thing to talk about is that 95% of us put all the weight we've lost back on. And one third or half of people put on more weight than they eat and lost than they think about to begin with. I think that's really important. Just it is a it's a fact, it's a statistic and I think it's quite saddening and it's why I'm so passionate about helping people lose fat and keep it off because that's the hardest thing, because actually losing fat, we know it comes down to those calories, but keeping that afterwards is really, really tricky. So, part of the solution is making it more flexible. So you aren't expecting, I don't want you to expect yourself to be perfect every single day, every single night of the week with your diet. I don't think that's fair on anyone to expect absolute perfection. I think it would be very difficult to even do that and achieve that without being kind of saying and breaking at some point. So, when we can accept that we might slip up now and then, we can get back on track much sooner, rather than kind of having that one slice of bread and jam and then having the whole loaf and the whole the whole jar. I can just think, oh, I've slipped up a little bit. I'll get back to it tomorrow, rather than having a week off where I just put all that weight back on. And then again, room for flexibility comes within, you can indulge in some nicer foods. I was talking to Louise beforehand, about how important calories are, macros are, and that as long as you stick to those, you can have something treaty now and then, maybe a biscuit, but Louise is saying she can't, she needs to have no go. So if she does have that, it's kind of, it's just, it just happens, whereas some people can, for example myself, I can kind of 
plug it into my total calorie intake and I'll take away something else when I'm in exchange. But it's having the knowledge that you can kind of break away from the diet and you can come back to it. Rather than breaking away and that being permanent, you failed, you're awful. So we have kind of a bit of a healthy, <coughs> flexible plate. So 80% of that plate should be your wholesome, great foods, minimally processed, great foods we all know like oats, lean meats, avocados, nuts, seeds. And then 10% of your food can come from kind of semi-junk food and another 10% from kind of blatant junk food. Just stuff you really love because if you can stick to your calories and you can have a small amount of what you love, that might keep you on your diet long term, which is more important. Because I prefer you to be able to have that 20% and stick to your diet 80% of the time than it be 100% and then 100% off. Because that's where we see the cycle of binges and yo-yo dieting. And don't get me wrong, you could go 100% wholesome and great, like Louise said, and that would be absolutely fine. It comes down to your personal preferences and what you know works for you and how you can stick to your diet. So you're not on or off the diet. It just is a lifestyle. There's no, oh, I'm on the diet this week. I'll start Monday. It's just that is what it is. You've got your calories, you've got your food, and you're always, always eating in a way that is your life. That's your lifestyle. There's no on and off. Because as soon as you start doing that, it becomes the yo-yo diet, the binges, the breaks. <laughs> so putting it together. So with this 140 pound female, to lose one pound a week, she wants 1,670 calories, there or thereabouts. Say she wants to eat three meals a day. I've given the example of three meals that were a fist of protein, fist of vegetables and a fist of sake carbs coming to around 300 calories and two thumbs or a handful of fats so that would be like a handful of seeds or like a, a tablespoon of olive oil or a tablespoon of peanut butter and that comes to 1,350 calories so she's still got 320 calories to split, uh, spend and play with so I think it's important to have some dairy, some calcium so she's having a portion of dairy, it's 100 calories two fruits 150 calories and then one chocolate digestive because she has 70 calories a day with that chocolate digestive. She loves and keeps her going every single day. But in proportion to the rest of her diet, it's very small. And you could take it a step further and do something that I've done and I actually did with Louise and is use a diary tracker like MyFitnessPal, which you may already be aware of and use yourself. And you can weigh the food down and you can actually know precisely how many calories you're eating every single day. What about training? Because we've talked a lot about nutrition, but training definitely has a role to play in fat loss, especially fat loss. Because we can lose weight by dropping calories, but we want to lose fat because we know we want to keep the shape of our body, we want to keep our body healthy, and being strong is cool. Being strong is a really great thing. I think it's underappreciated, especially for females, like being able to help my female clients do pull-ups body weight put up. This is a great thing and they get really empowered by it and I think it's terrific. So we want to keep that fat, uh, muscle so lose the fat. So we need some way of doing that. We want the diet to do the work for us for fat loss. So fat loss is more important than weight loss. <coughs> so you want to give a reason, give your body a reason to keep that lean tissue and build the metabolic potential. So check out Ellen. She's actually, she did a powerlifting meet recently. Um, she's over 50 years old and incredible. I, I'm very, very proud of her and she lifts weights, she looks great. And I advise all my clients, if they want to lose fat, then weights are the way to go. So I think something that's important is knowing how to monitor what's going on because we might do all this, we might work out what the calculator has given us, but what is in reality happening? You can't manage what you don't measure. And the better you ma measure, the better you can manage. And the better your management, the better your result. I think that's important because the more tools you can use to do the job, the better things will go. So I think it's important not just to look at the scale. Because I think the scale, although a lot of people dislike it, I think it, is, it keeps you honest, it keeps you on track. But not on its own, especially for females. Because you have your monthly cycle, which massively, massively impacts it. More than... I think a lot of even females realize how much it has an impact. So something else that's important is the girth measurement. So like maybe you've just started weight training and you've started this diet and you've gained muscle mass. So the weight on the scale might not even be changing. But your girth measurements might show kind of your weight
prices come down, glutes have increased, you've been doing lots of squats and things like that, which is great. So and again, important photos, clothes, how they're feeling. Are people commenting, you're looking better? They may well be. And then more important than all of that is how do you feel? Because at the end of the day, how you feel is most important. Are you enjoying your training? Are you enjoying your diet? Because if you're not, but you're looking better, and you're feeling better, uh, and everything's saying fat loss, but you're not actually feeling better, then is it really worth it? So always remember how do you feel? <laughs> so you can't diet forever. That's also another important point. A big reason people do put the weight back on is because they try and diet for a very long time. And the harder you diet, like with The Biggest Loser, the harder it is to keep that weight off. So we all know The Biggest Loser, where they kind of shower them all and try and get the fat loss ridiculously fast and it's just very unhealthy and unsustainable. Hopefully Louise doesn't do the same to you. Um, <laughs> I think encouragement is great, but they take it a bit of a step too far. For example, with Ali Vincent, starting at 234 pounds, got down to 122 pounds, lost over 100 pounds, fantastic. But her current weight is over 200 pounds, so she's put that weight back on, which is terrible, which is exactly what you want to avoid. And this comes down to something called your set point theory, which you might have heard about, and I won't talk about it in too much detail, but I like to talk about it in like a thermostat. So like the temperature in this room is set at 25 degrees. If it suddenly the sun comes out, it gets really hot, it'll start blasting the aircon. If it snows outside, it'll turn on heat. It's going to try and stay around 25 degrees. So your body has a body fat set point. So a body fat it wants to stay at. We all probably know kind of when we were younger that if we're a pauper as a child, like we always struggle not to be like that. Or if you're always really, you have those friends who are always really skinny and they're always really skinny and they seem to find fat loss really easy. I know for myself I've always been kind of really skinny, so getting when I got kind of slightly overweight, which I considered overweight, I was very unhappy, I felt awful. And so whenever we get away from that set point, the body fights to get back to its usual self. It will fight you. Um, like it did here, the body was used to being really heavy for Ali, and so it fought her, it made her really hungry, it made her kind of do less exercise because she never tried to manage a sustainable fat loss and then have points at which she sustained and maintained that fat loss. So I think it's important that people don't try and diet for too long. <coughs> I have a lot of people come to me who have seen the results of have people and are amazed and they want the same results. And I ask them, how long have you been dieting already? And they've been dieting for maybe even years, some of them. And I tell them, they have to take a break. They have to make themselves healthy before they can start losing fat again. Because you can't expect, the body's just not going to respond if you just keep attacking fat loss. So something I think is important is to take a break or give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. And that's normally to maintain that weight you've lost. I advise every 12 weeks for you to take a break. I think mean, it's really important. A lot of people don't want to do it, but I literally, I'm more happy with my clients who can maintain the weight they've lost than when they lose it almost. It's harder to do because the body really does fight. So, how do you do that to you? And is it going short maintenance? Exactly. So, for some people, if they're tracking their calories precisely, it gets very tiresome and difficult. And it's almost a psychological release also to start allowing them to eat a bit more so they might tr like track a little bit less precisely, but eat a bit more freely, go out for meals, <coughs> and that inevitably brings up their calories a bit, and they try and eat around maintenance. And that yeah, it's, it's exactly that. You want to try and eat around maintenance. And what's the food time? <coughs> the longer you've been dieting, so hopefully if you've been 12 weeks, then you could just have a week break. But if you've been doing it for longer than 12 weeks, then you want to have a longer period of time, really, really, until you feel healthy and energetic, and kind of, you've had enough of a break personally, I think it comes down very much down to the person, the person, sorry. Um, but the more fat you have, the longer you can keep dieting for, the less you have, kind of, the more breaks you want to take. Um, but yeah, at least a week. So the most efficient route to fat loss one calorie deficit that has to happen, otherwise we will not see fat come off our body. It has to happen. With an emphasis on protein. Because the protein, not only is the protein is pretty much, you must see it nowadays with everything is pushing protein. And there's a good reason for it. It has the highest thermic effect of food, so it helps burn slightly more energy when we digest food. It's the most safe and better results than kind of just doing endless amounts of hard work. So then, 
scientific dieting works for everyone, so I've not just done this myself, I've done it with other guys who are similar to me, I've done it with people who are much older than me, and they've lost lots of weight successfully as well, and I've done it with females as well. It, it definitely does work, and this is a bit of an appeal to authority, an appeal to my clients, but it, it definitely does work, and I've done it with many. So, thank you. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me anytime, I'm all over social media as well. So if you have any questions now, Thank you.